one of the patterns that has been at an all-time high, in my opinion, lately, in the collective of humanity, is a savior complex. It is one of the ways we externalize our power, we outsource our strength, and one of the ways we justify abandoning ourselves. And I would love to dive into that even more. So if you're not familiar with what the savior complex is, it is that yearning that we often have when we feel desperate, when we feel helpless, to have somebody just come in and fix it all for us. To have somebody that's gonna come and just take care of things and just champion our cause and come and make the wrongs right. I'm not sure if you can relate to a specific area of your life where you felt this way. So this savior complex has been quite amplified in the collective of humanity lately. It has been amplified, in my opinion, for many different reasons. One of the first reasons is like pure exhaustion. After years of like turmoil, that started with the pandemic, that started with all this, the social conflicts that came up, whether it's racial, whether it's political, whether it's like gender related, all these different conflicts, they create a lot of inner turmoil. And just imagine going through that for a very sustained amount of time. So very often there is this desire to just want to have it, to, to have it all be taken care of. And sometimes we look for people outside of ourselves that will be doing that for us. Sometimes we look for external figures, usually people in position of leadership, that will come and play that role, that will champion your causes, that will take a stand for what you believe, that will go into places where you will not allow yourself to go. That is what the Savior Complex is. And if you start analyzing it archetypally, very often when we are in that position, when we are enacting the savior complex, what we are present with, what we usually experience is helplessness, fear, despair, sometimes lack of hope. So any person out there that seems to have a spark of determination, a spark of warriorship, a spark of at the very least care. Any person out there that seems to care about the same causes that you feel desperate about. We often happen to project our power. Very often people think a projection is just you pushing out there your unhealed parts. No. You can also project your light onto someone. You can project your power onto someone. And that's what we do with people that we identify as potential saviors. For some people, it's going to be a, politi a political figure, some sort of leader out there that will fight the fight that you don't feel like you're equipped to fight, that will speak for the causes that you feel like you can you can speak to necessarily. So when we are enacting the savior complex, we are often, often in the embodiment of a part of us that feels helpless Maybe a child archetype. Archetypally, very often, when we are enacting the savior complex, meaning when we are looking for a savior, we happen to be just hijacked by the child inside of us. You know, as a child, you would have ex you, you wanted your parents to come take care of situations for you. As a child, we, we want our caregivers to come fix things when we're in despair. As children, we want somebody to come and make things okay when we're hurting. So very often when we are enacting the savior complex, what we're doing is we are letting that child archetype take over for a little while. Usually when we feel overwhelmed, when we feel uncertain. So the collective of humanity has been in that space, that space of experiencing for so many people at the very least. A collective savior complex, looking for people that will potentially make it all okay. And there's a big divine invitation whenever the, the savior complex is present. It is the awakening of the inner savior because what the savior complex does very often is there's a part of you that feels, I have this desire, there's this cause that matters to me, but for some reason I don't feel equipped 
to be able to do that. There's this desire that I would love to see manifested, but I don't feel equipped to be able to do that. So I'm going to project my power onto somebody else. We kind of project that power away. So there is a big invitation with that to actually awaken the inner savior. Some people love this saying, there is no one, no one is coming to save you. And I like saying there's someone coming to save you. But that someone is not outside of you. The, responsi the responsibility is yours. And outsourcing that responsibility, this is sometimes how we enact the savior complex. This is a way we open ourselves up for huge disappointments as well. And I'm not saying refuse any external help, refuse any external support, but it's time to really awaken your inner savior. It is really time to begin to internalize that responsibility again. It is time to begin to feel what it feels like, not to outsource your own energy, but to live by the standards that you would love to see unfold in this world, to live by the standards. What would it look like for you to become your inner savior in your life right now? What would it look like for you to be a champion for the things that really matter to your heart? What would it look like to reclaim all the energy that you have invested in having somebody else out there champion your causes? And you really begin to embrace again the responsibility that comes with the, the, the way of life you would love to embrace. Because that savior complex depletes you. That savior complex, complex it causes your power to leak. That's one of the ways we usually externalize our light. That's one of the ways we experience our power through other people, not through ourselves. And when you begin to actually awaken that inner savior, what does that look like? It means releasing the need to see somebody else out there as the savior you've been looking for. Releasing the need to see any other human being out there as a savior you've been looking for. Because this is sometimes one of the ways we make room for deception. This is sometimes one of the ways we make room for being used energetically. Looking for a savior out there is usually one of the ways we expose, we open up our energy field with the hopes, the expectations that we cast out of despair. And this depletes you instead of nourishing you. So there's never been a better time, in my opinion, in the path of evolution of humanity, or the expansion of our consciousness, to be in this space where you nurture a direct relationship with your power in a way that does not externalize it anymore, in a way that in a way that allows you to embody it more consciously. More consciously. But that's what I wanted to share with you about the Savior Complex. I hope this is helping you in any way. I hope it's bringing some degree of awareness. And I hope at the very least, it no longer causes you to externalize your power through waiting and looking for a savior. And that at the very least, it gives you more stamina in this moment, right there where you are, right there where you are, to begin to embrace the responsibility that comes with the changes you would, you would love to see happen in your life and in the collective. When we relate to responsibility from the perspective of the child inside of us, it burdens us. That's why we look for saviors. When we relate to, po to responsibility for the perspective of the child inside of us, it feels overwhelming. When we relate to responsibility from the perspective of the empowered inner adult or inner self, however you want to put it, it expands you. It expands you so radically and it puts back in your hands the power to affect change in your life right now. And in my opinion, this is what the earth desires. In my opinion, this is what you, this is why you're here. So I hope this resonated with you in any way. And if it did, please share it with people who might need it. If you like these videos, make sure to subscribe. Thank you for being here. And I will see you in the next video.